we will also we will also uh, uh, seeing some forecasting techniques in ma2 course as well in later on okay now let's talk about the control cycle this is one of the primary activity of any manager to perform a control activity in the organization this is one of the key perform primary performance requirement by a manager so how we can run a control cycle the first job of a manager is to set targets for example if we are talking about a production manager so the first task for a production manager is that he want to perform a control cycle for a quarter so first of all he needs to set a target that quarterly how many units we want to produce so he need to set a target for himself for example in a quarter we want to produce 10000 units this is the target he set after that plan okay we want to produce 10000 units so definitely we need to have some resources for that what can be the resources for example we need finance to buy the resources we need materials from where we are going to buy the material which should be our supplier whether the supply will be consistent or not after that labor labor is available or not if we need extra labor how we are going to get that labor part time full time on the shift basis and so on so the second stage is based on our target we need to get the resources we need to plan for the resources that whatever resources we need how we are going to get that so after plan again getting the resources that whatever we plan so far that this much requirements will going to be there then actually can we get it or not we actually need to hire some more employees we might need to buy actually some more machinery to increase our production we need to get contact with new suppliers for more consistent supply so then getting the resources once we got the resources then we need to actually implement our plan actually implement the plan this is what we called operations that whatever resources we get whatever plan we got now we actually start implementing it we will going to make schedules we will going to give schedules to the supervisor that okay labor need to produce this many units on a daily basis or on a hourly basis or a weekly basis so we actually need to implement our plan and actually start the production once we got some actual data then we need to do frequent comparisons then we need to do some frequent comparisons that for example weekly basis if we want to achieve some goal on a quarterly basis so frequent comparison can be on a weekly basis that for week 1 what was our target versus actual performance of week 1 our target was in week 1 we have to produce 800 units versus actually we produce 600 units so mean there's a difference of 200 units investigate the reasons or identify the reasons after that feedback whatever reasons we got after the investigation try to take corrective actions try to take corrective actions to eliminate those reasons if those are good reasons find out the reasons investigate the reasons if they are the good ones so you have to repeat it you have to bring some improvement in your goals or plan if those are the bad ones find out the reason and then take corrective actions that those those bad reasons should not going to repeat again and after that update your plan or improve your targets and goals if you need to change for example you are talking about quarterly goal and every week we are lacking behind so mean our goal was to produce 10000 units was unrealistic and if it's unrealistic then you need to change your goal you need to set a target that quarterly okay from five weeks our production is less we are not able to achieve our weekly goals so mean this goal is unrealistic so i need to modify my 
quarterly goal from 10,000 units to 7,000 units, for example. And then once I improve my goals, then I need to improve my plan as well. And this cycle will keep going on for a whole quarter. So this is what we call basically the control cycle. Mm. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. Any questions so far? No, sir. Okay. Next, the concept of flex budget. Now, what is happening? Let's look into that, this example so I can explain the flex budget. Here's a production cost report for week 32. This is for one week for the department making cartons. Now, actual performance is given and budgeted performance is given. Let's take the production units. Actually, we produce 5,000 units. Budget was for 4,800 units. This is what, this is our activity. Now direct materials, the cost of direct material is 1874. Budget was 1850. How much is the difference? The difference is $24. And what they have written here at worst means bad. Why it's bad? Because our budget was that our cost should be $1850 but actual cost is $24 more than the budget. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that as actual cost is $24 more than the budget. So it's a adverse variance or it's a adverse difference or it's a bad difference. What do you think this comparison of direct material is okay? Mm, no, sir. Why not? Because of the units. It's the units because this direct material cost of $1850. This target was set based on 4,800 units. But actually when we are comparing, so actually due to any reason, our production was more. So if our, if our actual performance is more than the budget, so we cannot compare this 1874 with 1850 for direct material cost. This would be wrong comparison. One rule for comparison is that you should compare or you should compare all the information based on like with like. So comparisons should be like with like. You cannot compare apple with oranges. You need to compare apple with apples and oranges with oranges. So what's the solution for this? We cannot compare this budget and actual performance. So we need to create a flex budget. What is flex budget basically? that I will take the actual activity and this budget or this fixed budget, I will change it to reflect this actual activity. So let's try to produce here the flex budget. For example, let's say for direct materials. First, I need to get the budgeted price per unit. How I can get the budgeted price based on the same one. 1850 is the total cost of direct material divided by 4,800 units. So how much will be the budgeted price here per unit? 1850 divided by 4,800. This is around 0 0.38, 4, 0 0.39? 0 0.39, yes. So this is 0.39 dollar per unit. This was budget. I will take this standard price or budget price, and I will multiply it with the actual activity. So standard price into actual activity. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my budgeted price per unit was $0.39 per unit. Actual activity is 5,000. Okay. So my corrected direct price should be 0 0.39 into 5,000, dollars 1927. 1927. Yes, sir. You multiply with 5,000 units? Yes, sir. Okay, so it's I didn't do... you took 0 0.39 or 0 0.38? No, I, oh, achha. but 39 is 1950. I took the original one. Yeah, I, I took the I rounded one. I didn't know. Right. Yes, no yes. big deal. So I now we off. got the flex one. Now this is the best way to compare this price. So actual, 
For 5,000 units, the cost is 1874. And now the flex budget. How much? 1850. Now let's compare this information. So for direct materials, actual cost is 1874. Budgeted was 1850. The difference is 24 dollars. Mm -hmm. But here, this is not adverse anymore. This is favorable. Why it's favorable? Because actual cost. Okay, sorry. This, uh -huh. sorry. So it should be 19, oh, 1950. I do six budget one. 74, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 1950. And then it's 76 now. 80, yeah, 76. And this 76, of course, is a favorable one. Why? Because my actual cost is 1874, which is $76 less than the budgeted one. So $76 is a favorable. So now this comparison can be considered as like with like comparison. Clear with this thing? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So this is the concept of flex budget. To flex your budget, we always take the budgeted price or standard price and we multiply with the actual activity. So what we did, this budget, the original budget, this can be named as fixed budget. We took the cost per unit or budgeted price or standard price of the fixed budget and we multiply with the actual activity. So what we did, we took the fixed budget and we flex it at actual activity. So we can compare our budget with the actual activity. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. Try to find out the variance for the direct labor direct. cost. Uh, 8.44, 8.43.75. So should I round it off to 8.44 then? Round it and tell me the variance, favorable or adverse, and how much? Or minus. Okay, so it's 19 favorable. 19 favorable. So 843 is the flex budget and actually is 825. So this is almost 18.75 or $19 favorable for direct labor. And same on whenever we get, when we... Uh, create a fixed budget at one level of activity and actual activity is different from that. We always need to get a flex budget and then we need to compare actual performance with the flex. Now, if we see here, if we do this mistake to compare actual with the fixed budget, direct material is adverse, labor is adverse. But when we compare it with the flex budget, so direct material is favorable as well as our uh, direct labor cost is also favorable. So obviously, the information is completely different. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. Any question with this so far? No, sir. Okay. Now here is question 20. A business has set its production budget on the basis of production. Now fixed budget is based on 15,000 units of a single product. The direct material budget's total, this is what? 100,500. This is fixed budget cost based on what? Based on 15,000 units. In fact, production was only 14,600. This is what? Actual activity. What is the flex budget total for direct materials to the nearest dollar? So give it a try. One second, sir. Flex the budget. At which level of activity? 14,600. 14, Based on actual activity. Next budget total. Okay. Ninety-seven thousand eight hundred and twenty, sir. A. Option A. Yes, sir. Yes, option A is the correct one. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. Okay. 